Hello, everyone. I'm Lou Marciani, the director of the Innovation Institute for Fan Experience and host of Fan Centric and Lou, Dr. Lou's Views, a series of podcasts and newsletter about people, processes, and technologies that affect the global sports and entertainment industry and its fans. Welcome to IIFX Fan Centric Podcast Series. The series is about fans. What do fans want? and need when they attend sports and entertainment events, such as those in stadiums and arenas and festivals and marathons and concerts. Our podcast series takes the journey with the fan as they leave home, arrive at the venue, enjoy the event and return home. We also discuss technology trends, industry gaps, communication and uh, connections with fans real world fan experiences and technology that address challenges facing the sports and entertainment industry and their fans. Our goal is to help the sports and entertainment industry focus on the fans. As teams and leagues navigate the return to work, play and spectate, they rely on innovation and manage and how to manage and keep facilities safe for the fans, how to communicate and connect with the fans and provide technologies to enhance the fan experience and create a memory making event. Our guest today is Jack Hogan, Vice President of Partnerships for MassGen. MassGen is a new generation of checkout system using AI and machine vision to allow customers to scan, pay, and be on their way. They are the world's first completely touchless checkout system and it also happens to be the fastest self-checkout self solution on the market. Our guest today is Jack. Jack, how are you today? Good, Lou. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Uh, I, I got to ask you a real question to start off with. Uh, the name, Mask Jim. <laughs> Give me, how did this all come together? Everybody's asking me, what's the story on it? Well, unfortunately, I didn't have any input on that because oh. it is a it is a little bit of a uh, a peculiar name, isn't it, Lou? Uh, so first and foremost, it's pronounced like mashed potatoes plus uh, gin and tonic. Yeah. Uh, no relation to either of those items, but it really just helps uh, hammer it home, at least to some of our consumers. So essentially, what it comes down to is it's a, a mashup of general intelligence which is an AI term that probably only seven people in the world really understand. Uh, but our founders happen to be uh, a couple of those people and they think it is brilliant. Whereas I spend the first five minutes of every sales meeting explaining it to the potential customers. So uh, now it's kind of our name. So we, we, we ride with it because we put out some pretty good uh, content in the industry and, um, Nothing we can do about it now. We got to we got to keep uh, rocking it loud and proud. Well, how does uh, mass uh, gen work? Yeah, so basically, what we've built. I don't know if any of you guys have been around and seen it in in stadiums, but basically, it's a it's a self contained uh, computer vision checkout system. Right. So uh, some of the key pieces that we have here is we use cameras, right? And this allows the checkout system to see, just like you or I can see. Right. So it gives us the advantage of not needing to read barcodes. There's no FRID chips. Um, you're not needing to like tag in and tag out of any sort of location. You never need to set up an account. Right. So all you do is walk up there, take your items, pop them down on the little square and uh, let our cameras and computer vision do the work that a, a cashier would normally uh, be tapping a bunch of buttons on a screen. Right. And uh, because we're able to ring up all the items at once, that's what makes us the, the fastest uh, self checkout on the planet. Well, let me ask you this, Jack. You're, you're saying to me, and I, I've experienced this uh, I get a, a beer and a hamburger at uh, City Field, and, and you're, I don't need barcodes or RFIDs. I don't understand. Yeah. So basically, uh, 
City Field's a great example. We have a really good relationship with our friends Airmark over there at the Met Stadium. Um, so you basically have kind of turned the system of ordering on its head. As you know from you know, your past years of attending events, I've been to many events this year. I got to go to a Niner game the other day. Um, you usually stand there, right, in line. You wait for the uh, cashier to punch in your order and then go back and grab you some food and then you pay after the food is plopped down in front of you. Um, the way that we actually speed up lines is not only with the machine, it's kind of with converting the experience for the consumer. Um, so it's more of like a grab and go style location, which is becoming really popular these days. So a lot of these stadiums are actually blowing out that front counter um, and using just the delivery side of it. Um, so this is basically creating a massive advantage for our customers because as you know, there's a huge labor shortage right now. Um, and it's really hard to get people to staff these events. So obviously lines are going up because of the lack of staffing. So with this sort of reorganization and optimization of how people line up and queue up uh, with mashed in self-checkout at the end of the location, that's what you're really going to see to achieve those, you know, 300% faster uh, line movement and um, more revenue for the customers. And, you know, as you folks care about the fan centric experience, uh, you're going to be able to go up and get a few more beers per game, uh, which makes the game more enjoyable. And you're not going to miss as many plays or any, if you, you know, you play your cards right and you head up between quarters and at halftime or uh, just dash up between innings. Yeah, I, I, I attended a couple of games this uh, in a ba during the baseball season, <clears throat> and I took our family to one game, and my son said, I'm going to go up and get a hot dog for my son. And, you know, so three innings later, he comes down back to the seat. And, <laughs> and, and, no, no, it had to do with, with shortage of uh, personnel. The okay. stands were, were, were backed up. Uh, I don't know how many feet, but way, way back. He said, that's how long it took. So you're not only making it more efficient, but with the, with the, like you said, with the shortage of uh, staffing, how can Mastion solve this problem? Well, so there's a bunch of key points here. The first thing is that we just want to make the experience much faster, right? A touchless checkout will do that because you're easily firing through those lines in half the time. Um, so Mastion, we've proven that through our research. We cut lines in half. Uh, we often double the throughput of a stand. You can see that in case studies with the Broncos referenced in Forbes. Um, our recent research done uh, this season shows that reducing lines can actually provide between $8 million and $23 million of additional revenue per season for venues, right? So not only will your son not have to waste three innings of his life uh, watching the game on TV while inside of the stadium, uh, you're going to be able to earn more money as the team and the stadium. And obviously uh, that experience isn't conducive to him jumping up to go back to another game quickly when the main goal is to get the fans from the couch to the seats. The other thing is, is probably the reason that your son was stuck in line that long is because of the labor shortage, right? right? We really can't hold the teams responsible for this. It's not their fault. Right. This type of fractional labor, which is not like full time employed, is really, really, really hard to get right now. So what we can do using the mash and touch the system is basically we can improve the lives of the staff that are in the stadium. Right. You'll be able to turn uh, two cashiers into the power of eight. And they're actually not having to ring up items. So their lives are actually even easier from that perspective. They're just kind of observing and making sure that the stand stays running like a well-oiled machine. So it just basically concessions is a massive part of the fan experience. Anything we can do to improve it is what's going to drive revenue for teams and get your fans back in the stadium faster. Why should uh, operators of stadiums care about their food services and, and, and how can Mastion help uh, increase revenue, provide customer uh, services that they never had before. Yeah, so stadiums should really be caring about their food service to, to the level that it's what's going to make the fans come back for repeat visits, right? Uh, if your food is only okay, then you may get the fan once a year. But if they know that they're going to be able to get their money's worth for those tickets and they're going to be able to have a quick and enjoyable concessions experience, 
along with seeing a good product on the field, or in some cases, uh, you know, hate watching their team, who knows, might not be the best product on the field. In the case where it's not the best product on the field, the concessions need to be stellar, right? Because you're going to want to have uh, your beers, you're going to want to have your hot dogs, you're going to want to make sure that your steak sandwich or your nachos is hot when you get it. Because if, if you're getting the food that's cold and you're having to watch your team lose, which believe me, I've watched a lot of my teams lose over the years, uh, it's not nearly as fun as when they win. But um, if you can get in and out of the concession stands quickly, that's going to really, really help you drive that consumer adoption. Also, you'll see your, your biggest fans, right? Your season ticket holders, they're able to get different perks and stuff through integrations that we have on the Mastion, right? So they're getting some of their discounts. They're able to use their loaded ticket values and things of that nature. So those are pretty much the fans that you want to make sure have an excellent experience every single game. That's your biggest revenue driver. So I would say that that's uh, two of the key aspects of basically improving the fan experience. And that, that can all tie back to using Mastion as well as many other things that you can do, mobile ordering. Um, there, there's a ton of different ways that people are addressing the problem. One of the tricks with mobile ordering is really what I mentioned earlier about that, the hotness of the food, right? You, you want your food to be warm. So you want to make sure that if you put punch in your mobile order, that it's either getting delivered to your seat in a really timely fashion, which yeah. is extremely difficult during the labor shortage right now, yeah. or you have a really, really good uh, procurement center or station where your top tier fans are getting their food in and out quickly once they've done the mobile app. Yeah. And we're, you know, we're concerned about health safety too. And uh, talk to people about the touchless, you know, opportunity we never had before. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty, pretty cool to not have to touch anything. All you're doing is touching your food and, you know, paying with your, your Apple pay and you're, you're in and out. Um, you're right. Th this is kind of a new thing for the industry. There's other ways of accomplishing it. Like I just mentioned mobile, um, and then our system is the one that you're basically able to, to get in and out without having to sign up for anything and never having to type in your credit card information on an app, which is a, a big thing for me because I feel like I've put my credit card information into thousands of places at this point in my life. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you lose track of it and you're getting a call a few weeks later. Oh, so-and-so, your card's been compromised. So uh, those are some of the key aspects that, that I really like about the self-checkout style systems. Um, however, I... It, I've had some good experiences with the mobile ordering services as well. Yeah. So who in the industry uh, is already using a uh, mass gym? Yes. Yeah, so we've got a bunch of people across a bunch of sectors. We've got, you know, the penguins, the chiefs, the Broncos, obviously the Mets are one of our, uh, our banner clients out there. Um, we're seeing the Rockies do really great work with the expansion. Um, so that's just a few to name some. And then uh, we've got some nice announcements coming out in the next few weeks about our work with the uh, Anaheim Ducks and uh, their their stadium in general, which is going to be a, a big winner for us, I, I believe, going forward with all the concerts that they're hoping, yeah. fingers crossed, that we get back to in uh, the Los Angeles County. Uh, really looking forward to, to seeing some shows. Uh, we also just got the Sharks live, which is uh, very near and dear to my heart as a as a long suffering Sharks fan uh, out here in San Jose. You know, besides sports, uh, <clears throat> where else does uh, Mastion operate? Yeah, so you know, we're, we're in a lot of the major banks in New York City. The major corporate cafes there. Um, we're in a bunch of convenience stores now. We'll see some large announcements on the horizon about our expansion in that space. Uh, Canada, USA and Sweden so far as our, uh, as our countries. Um, what else? Yes. Yeah, so that's pretty much our, our, the breadth of our space. Oh, we, we've done a lot of airports lately. So we've grown, we're in the Charlotte airport. You can't miss us. We just launched uh, Chicago's airport O'Hare, uh, the Phoenix airport. We're pretty much uh, plastering them. Um, and we're expanding rapidly in that space as well. We, Oh, we just launched our first, uh, our first airport in Hawaii. So that's with our partners over at uh, HMS Host. They're they're a pretty good partner good. in the space for us. Very good. Well, you know, let's go back to March 2020, the beginning of the pandemic. How did that really affect Mastion? Uh, what happened at that point up to today that uh, transformed this company so quickly? Yeah, it was a rough time. I actually just joined the company uh, about two weeks before uh, Rudy Gobert was out there uh, in the Utah Jazz game 
and the world shut down. So that was a pretty, pretty interesting time in my life. Uh, we really had to reevaluate where we were as a company because a lot of our, a lot of our revenue originally came from corporate cafeterias, right? Think about your large banks in New York City and just generally large corporations that you go to the cafeteria or cafe every day to get some food. So that was actually the general focus. We, we had a bunch of sports teams, but our sports teams were still uh, um, lesser in comparison to our, our business related cafe revenue. So um, a lot of that went away, right? Our expansion in that uh, corporate cafe market kind of really plateaued, as you can imagine, sure. for the next 12 months, because everyone was working from home. Uh, the only places that we're still having folks in where, you know, your hospitals and your uh, big manufacturing locations like cars. Um, so we were able to keep the world going in those type of locations. We really pivoted and pressed hard and expanded our hospital footprint massively. Um, you can see some articles online about our work with the Cleveland Clinic. Um, so that's kind of what we pivoted to. And then through that time period, we were actually able to go in and work pretty effectively and do a bunch more development on the product to make it more scalable when things bounce back. So as you know, uh, about a year later, we've got uh, fans back in the buildings, albeit in a limited capacity, but, yeah. but fans were clamoring for different styles of checkout. You don't want to be standing in line, breathing on the person in front of you uh, and standing there for five, six, seven minutes. So we basically took that time to kind of get our lives in order and really attack new markets. Um, we also pivoted pretty heavily into the, the convenience store and like uh, petroleum uh, C-store industry. So that's kind of what kept us afloat during that one year period. But now that uh, sports teams are back and, and we're starting to see success in the baseball market extremely well and the basketball market, as well as uh, we're doing really well in some of the hockey, hockey venues, because obviously they have more than just hockey and basketball, they're going to get all your concerts um, and major events of that nature in the area. Um, so basically, it just forced us to adapt and uh, kind of hold on to the uh, sectors that were rocking and rolling for us and double down on improving the technology for those other sectors that were going to bounce back now. <laughs> and we're seeing that bounce back. You know, along with your growth, in technology, what other emerging technologies and sports are you excited about that may be coming on board? Yeah, so what we're pretty excited about is the amount of different ways that we can integrate with the, the fan experience and make it a better, closer experience. So there's a lot of products that are providing mobile wallets now, right? So your ticket comes on a mobile wallet, and with that mobile wallet, you're getting access to money, access to discounts. Uh, you can earn points. There's some, some of our customers have rolled out loyalty programs, right? Uh, our friends at the, at the Detroit Lions have a program where if you, you sign up for it, you get entered into a contest where you can win tickets to the Super Bowl. And all you have to do is buy the food that you were already going to buy anyway, right? So there's a lot of different motivations that are coming out here to really give back to the fans. So that's what that's what I'm pretty excited about in the industry. These loyalty programs, I think, are going to have uh, make a big difference in the next uh, few years because you know you win a few trips to a Super Bowl, you're going to go uh, you're going to go buy more hot dogs and beer if you can uh, pull that off. Well, you know, Jack, you you talk about technology, but do you think that uh, is the journey of the fan uh, different today than it was, let's say, before the the pandemic? Yeah, I think one of the other things that stated really need to look at is how to improve just general movement right a lot of these stadiums have tight corridors so as i mentioned people are remodeling and kind of rethinking how the food service works that's actually going to increase just general mobility within the stadium right if you have lines not queuing up in those corridors pushing back into the walkway if people are lined up along the sides i think that's going to make for a better fan experience uh, i went to pretty large concert the other, the other day and um, it, it seemed like everything was a lot more spread out it was much easier to walk around and get the items that I needed and, you know go grab a beer go grab a bite to eat uh, usually you'd kind of be having to fight through a crowd so it seems like the fans themselves have kind of changed their mindset a little bit we're not all gonna pack up next to the stage and get get shoulder to shoulder and you know try to crush each other on the way to the front um, so I think that in line with uh, with the stadiums and 
you know, other providers are doing to to ensure some distancing, allow people to have space if they want it. I think that's really what's changing the game right now in the fan experience perspective. Yeah. You know, one of the last question too is when on this journey, what do you think in the future, even before I leave my house, what, what do you think the spectators and the fan is, is, could do on this journey right from his house, right even before he goes to that Sharks game? And what do you think down the road? Yeah, I think there's a lot of innovation coming actually in that space. Uh, we, we see different ways of like signing up for your parking. I know yeah. parking can sometimes be a debacle. Uh, one thing I noticed that the Warriors are doing is that your ticket comes with a free um, free Muni or bus pass, right? Yeah. So anytime you buy a, a Warriors ticket, all you have to do is scan the barcode of that ticket on the public transit in San Francisco. So that was a really cool innovation that I've seen uh, for you. As you know, you're just bopping out of your house and all of a sudden you don't have to to worry about taking your ride share or any of that stuff you can just take the the public transport right like that um the other thing is just getting fans out of the house right that's the hard part because yeah. watching football on tv is a great product that's one of the things that i've heard a lot of gms and um, basically stadium managers talk about is football is a great product on tv the beer is less expensive from my fridge how do we get the fans to come back to the stadium um, and that's where I talked about the fan loyalty and, and other items like that. Uh, plus, there's nothing that I, I'm glad the fans are back in the stadium because I felt like the product on TV was a little worse when there was no fans in the stadium. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm really happy when we get back to the stadiums and actually get to enjoy the roar of the crowd. But um, yeah, that, that's what I would say we've got coming down the pike for people as they're leaving their houses. Also, the other good thing is just the availability of uh, online tickets and online ticket marketplaces. That's always been great if you can just bop on and have like a more of a spur of the moment game decision. Oh, look, the price levels for tonight's game at the, the baseball stadium dropped. You can just buy a ticket in 15 seconds and you get it delivered on your phone and you're ready to walk into the stadium. That that I've really enjoyed. That's true. Well, listen, uh, Jack, thank you so much for your insight into that fan experience and uh, congratulations with your work with uh, Mastin. Thank you. Thanks, Lou.